there is a lot of dissonant talking about what is going on in Nicolas Maduro's Venezuela. An important part of this blabber is death because a lot of people don't bother to go after the correct information, remaining subject to the most obscure political manipulation. That is exactly why this video was made, to enlighten, not to confuse. These are the four things you should know about Venezuela at this moment. A big part of what helps maintain Nicolas Maduro's grip on power right now is the idea that the only interest Americans have in Venezuela is taking their oil reserves. But the truth is the United States have never depended so little on Venezuelan oil. Venezuela's participation among the main oil suppliers for the US has fallen drastically over the last decade, and that is not exclusive to Nicolas Maduro's country. In the last years, Americas have been consistently rising their daily oil production, decreasing their dependence on other countries. The leap is so big, the country has become the biggest oil producer on the planet, even ahead of Saudi Arabia. Venezuela, on the other hand, is in free fall. With no money for investments, right now the country produces 11 times less barrels than the United States, a number that is not even enough to place them among the 10 biggest global producers. In 2017, Americans have produced 16% of all world's oil and consumed 20%. The trend, however, is that in 2019, the country's oil production rise will be equivalent to the entirety of Venezuela's production. According to the U.S. Senate Information Administration, starting September of next year, the United States will even export their excess production. The numbers are so optimistic. They predict in 2021, the United States will sell to other countries at least 1 million barrels a day, a volume larger than all of Venezuela's production in 2018. Truth is, Americans have never been so independent to put the Venezuelan dictatorship into question. Maybe that's why they're so determined right now, as never before. You've probably heard that Venezuela is going through a humanitarian crisis, but you may not understand the true extent of the problem. Nowadays, minimum wage is only $6.38 per month. The amount is indisputably insufficient for survival, only enough to acquire a dozen eggs and a pound of meat. The result is an inevitable hunger crisis. In 2017, 64.3% of Venezuelans lost an average of 25 pounds and 9 out of 10 residents in the country admitted they were not able to pay for their daily food. And the problem is not only about consumption, but production. In 2008, Venezuela produced 70% of the necessary food to feed its population. A decade later, this number has dropped to mere 20%. There's food shortage in the country's main supermarkets, besides never-ending lines. And food is not the only problem. With the biggest inflation on the globe, over 1 million percent in 2018, Venezuelan medical labs are unable to acquire raw material and are currently operating at only 30% capacity on average. Thanks to this situation, Venezuela deals with intense medicine scarcity. The people eat less and less, and when they are sick, they don't have access to proper medical treatment. And here, it's important to emphasize, there is no economic embargo on the country whatsoever. The United States are actually Venezuela's biggest commercial partners. The bilateral trading goods between the two countries has reached $16.1 billion in 2016, the last year with available data. The sanctions imposed by the American government are directed towards certain Venezuelan organizations and government officials who are accused of corruption. Other than that, they stop American citizens from acquiring Venezuelan public debt securities. These sanctions, however, are recent, imposed by Trump long after the humanitarian crisis had begun. And they do not stop Venezuelans from negotiating goods with any other nations, including food and medicine from Americans themselves. In fact, Americans continue to purchase Venezuelan oil. In the end, 
The idea that the Venezuelan humanitarian crisis is a result of these sanctions is mere ideological propaganda. The Venezuelan humanitarian crisis is not restricted to a single territory. According to the UN, 3.4 million Venezuelans left the country in the last years, which is more than 10% of its population. This comes up to 5,000 Venezuelans crossing the borders every day, a huge number of them on foot. Most emigrants choose other Spanish-speaking Latin American countries as their destiny. In the last years, this choice has been mostly Colombia for 1.1 million refugees, Peru for 506,000, Chile for 288,000, and Ecuador for 221,000. Brazil has received 96,000 Venezuelan refugees over the same time period. The situation is so catastrophic that Venezuelans are already the largest group to seek asylum in the United States. According to the UN, this is the biggest refugee crisis in the continent's recent history, consistently bigger than the European crisis. In the last four years, the number of Venezuelans that reached other countries in America was almost double the number of refugees that got into the European Union over the same time period. That is exactly why this is not a problem that belongs to one nation, but to the entire planet, especially those countries most affected by a humanitarian crisis for which Nicolás Maduro is the main person to be held accountable. With such economic difficulties, Venezuela won't stop its bleeding while it remains governed by a dictatorship. There are 966 political prisoners in the country at this moment, the largest number on its history, with tons of complaints of torture and rape. In less than two years, between 2015 and 2017, the Venezuelan state performed over 8,200 executions, according to Amnesty International. In 2018, Venezuela registered 23,000 homicides, at least 30% of which committed by police or military personnel. In March 2017, in a state coup performed by Maduro, the Venezuelan National Assembly lost the right to legislate, which means to say there is no division of powers in the country. In 2018, with control over the judiciary, Maduro was re-elected president in an illegitimate election out of the electoral calendar, with no opposition present, a good portion of them under arrest, nor any independent international observance. Among countless accusations of vote buying, over half the population of Venezuela didn't even show up to vote. The Venezuela National Assembly, by the way, even in clandestinity, does not acknowledge Nicolas Maduro's legitimacy. Parliament understands his term ended last January 10th, the final day of his mandate, and that Maduro usurps the presidential chair at this very moment. It is exactly because of this that Juan Guaidó, the president of the National Assembly, has proclaimed himself interim president of Venezuela until new elections are called. His mandate is recognized by the planet's main democracies, such as Canada, Japan, Australia, the United Kingdom, France and Germany. Maduro, on the other hand, is supported by countries which are frequently accused of violating human rights, like Cuba, China, Russia and Iran. This is the game that's being played right now and Venezuela won't solve its problems while it remains cloistered by a dictatorship. Today, there's no other option. It's democracy or death.